All games strive to be an escape from reality into an artificial landscape slash playground for the player of the game. Hello, this is Preacher Gamer. Welcome to the Top 10 Atmospheric Games. In games, we imagine that we're knights, soldiers, bounty hunters, warriors, and even little yellow circles with triangle wedges for a mouth. Um, obviously, some games are better at immersing players than others. And few would call Pac-Man immersive, but even fewer would call it a bad game. In other words, the value of a game is not tied specifically to how well it immerses you, but those games that do draw you in become special experiences that are hard to forget. This is a list of my favorite games that surprised me with how well they made me forget I was playing a video game. Portal 2 We all have games in our library that we wish we could play again as if we had never played it before. This one tops that list for me. Specifically, I remember knowing nothing about this game at all when I picked it up. I had never played the first game and just ordered this game from Gamefly because it scored well and looked cool. Immediately the game throws you in the deep end, and it's a wild ride all the way through for sure. Easily one of the most clever games and puzzle games ever. Why is it on this list? Two reasons. One, the first time I ever played it, I got to the part where GLaDOS tells you she has a surprise waiting for you in a few test chambers. I remember dreading that surprise, and that sense of dread changed the way I played the game. I went from eager to do these puzzles to almost cautious, afraid of what might be waiting around the corner. I remember walking into that dark room, hearing her count down to the surprise, and then the lights go up, and I was terrified about what might happen. This is a game that is not actually scary at all, but has the ability to, and that is amazing. Second reason I put it on this list is that I started this game up one time with my dad uh, sitting on the couch with me one day, and it was only about five minutes in when he leaned over to me and asked, what the heck is this? It was so funny because thrown into the deep end, he had no idea what to make of the game at all. Earthbound. What can be said that has not already been said? Earthbound draws in the player by first putting them in a familiar setting and then suddenly warping that familiar to something that's unrecognizable. Examples are like when you start in a normal town and then walk through a cave and you wind up in a town full of crazy cultists. Just by passing through a cave and the environment changes so drastically. Or when again you start in a normal city and then wind up in a twisted version of that same city. Ness's Dream is a good example, where you are exposed to elements from all over the game that are twisted in some bizarre way. The end of the game deserves special note because that's when things get the most bizarre. These jarring experiences is what makes the player go from feeling comfortable playing the game to feeling slightly uncomfortable but still very much enjoying it. Very few RPGs can pull this off and none do it better than this game. And I think the secret is the familiar twisted. When you start out in a, a fantasy realm, and then things get even more fantasy, it feels just par for the course. When you start out in a normal reality, and then things go all crazy, it feels like you've really been pulled into the experience. The game draws you in with its visuals and sound to the point where the experience is almost all-encompassing. Metroid Fusion. Ah, the smell of controversy. Smells like barbecue chicken. Let me say that this is not my favorite Metroid game. But what it is, is impressive. With all the limitations of the Game Boy Advance, this game has to fight harder than any of its brethren in the series, with the exception of Zero Mission. It is easy for games like Super Metroid and Metroid Prime to wow with atmosphere because those games are on the Super Nintendo and the GameCube. I feel that Zero Mission, which I, as I said was also on the Game Boy Advance, is a better game overall because I find it more fun to play. But Fusion immerses the player better than, than Zero Mission and it is more scary. Although it must be said that there are some genuinely scary moments in Other M that come pretty close. Uh, some parts where you're going through corridors or you go into the room and the camera comes in tight And I would say that other M is not the better game for sure But there are some moments where it genuinely feels some terror in it 
But once again, that's on a console with polygons. Fusion wins in this category for the Metroid series simply because it managed to be just as immersive as all the other Metroid games and superior to some of them, and it does all of this while it's on a handheld system. It has the greatest handicap and yet performs just as well. Star Trek Bridge Commander for the PC. At this point, it should be clear that I love Star Trek, but as a whole, Star Trek games are terrible. The problem is that it's difficult to produce a game that makes you feel like you're in the world of Star Trek. The Bridge Commander, I think, is the answer. You are the captain of the ship, ordering your crew to scan, beam, fire phasers. You and your crew will escort uh, ships that are defenseless, defend star bases, negotiate peace treaties, rescue hostages, and ultimately solve an intergalactic scale mystery. It features guest appearances from actors that portray Data and uh, Captain Picard, and uh, like Brent Spinner and uh, Patrick Stewart. I mean, their real voices are in the game. It's just an authentic Trek experience. It probably goes without saying that this game is not for everybody, but if you ever felt the need to boldly go where none have gone before and sit in the center chair of a starship, this game, it may be your ticket. Jor's Mask. Kind of like Metroid Fusion, again, this is not my favorite Zelda game. As far as immersion goes, though, I can't really think of another one that matches it. This game just oozes mystery and menace. Even more than an adventure, it feels like a philosophical journey about how we play games. But it's not the visuals that make the atmosphere so rich. It is a combination of the sound design and quality NPCs. Never have I played a game where everyone I met not only felt genuine, but valuable to the quest. Some more than others, sure, but not a single NPC feels like a waste of time to talk to. To prove my point, I have played and beaten all the Zelda games multiple times, except this one. I have only beaten Majora's Mask once. And the reason I never seem to finish it is I always just get lost in the world and spend all my time talking and helping its people. I really like the 3DS remix with the updated Bomber's Notebook because I just spend all my time trying to fill out the Bomber's Notebook entries and not actually saving the world. And whenever I run out of time, I reset the days and see who else I can help. It is a testament to world building when you play a game not to finish it, but to explore it and interact with the people who live there. Next up, we got Luigi's Mansion. Here's a game that should not work, but totally does. One of the reasons it works is Luigi's sound design. Hearing Luigi hum shakily in time with the music or whistle if the room is lit is one of the most brilliant things I have ever heard in a game. The zoomed close-up for unlocking the doors and Luigi's shaking hands turning the knob is also another great feature and again adds to the spooky atmosphere of the game. I love playing this game because I notice new things about it every time I play it. Another thing I often do with this game that proves its immersive qualities is that I'll awful be often beat it in a single sitting. It says a lot about a game you can pick up and play for hours and not tire of it. Minecraft. For a game with such simple presentation, nothing draws you in quite like it. This game is the Jekyll and Hyde with its two modes. In creation mode, there's no rush or stress as you build whatever you want and how you want it, letting your imagination just go wild and lead you into complex designs. But survival mode is the exact opposite. You rush to find a shelter, you rush to mine supplies, you rush to complete tasks, all while trying not to starve to death and not to succumb by the attacks of the constant monsters that surround you. You will stress as you mine, wondering if a creeper is wading through that wall when you break through, or a lava will pour through overhead, or perhaps falling and just falling to your doom. But no matter what mode you play, the objective for the game is exactly what you make of it. And it's hard to become immersed in a game that has no real end game beyond what you want it to be. Want to see how long you can survive? Do it. Want to build a limitless city? Do it. The game is freedom to do what you want, and the atmosphere adds to this. I said it's hard to make a game like this that draws you in, but Minecraft strikes a perfect balance with its unique visuals and, most of all, its sound design. Some people might call it plain or not have it enough, but that's the exact point. The music never feels too adventurous for when you're trying to relax, and the music never feels too calming for when you're stressed. It's exactly what it needs to be at all times, no matter what you're playing it. 
and it just draws you in in such a wonderful way. The music just seems to match whatever motivation you have and suits whatever goals you have in mind. If ever there was a game that was sort of all things to all players, this is probably it. Donkey Kong Country. The original DKC is all about atmosphere. The music, the levels are all designed to make you feel like you're on DKC Island, chilling with the greatest tie-wearing ape of them all. The very first area is the best as it just feels like it defines the whole series. When I think about Donkey Kong Country, my favorite game is, yes, Donkey Kong Country 2. But when I think about the series, I always picture the very first level of the very first Donkey Kong Country game. It defines the whole series. And that's what Atmosphere can really do. It locks a memory into your brain that your brain just really won't let go of. This game was basically made to prove that the NES, Super Nintendo could still cut it with new consoles despite its age. Uh, when it came out, it delivered an experience that proved 3D alone was not enough to sell an experience. In short, this is what this game was, a total gaming package, an experience through and through. Few games have been able to match that through the years, and very few probably ever will. Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. First, let me start uh, and say that every game on this list I think is a good game in its own right even Bridge Commander. It may not be for everybody, but I still feel like it's a good game. Except this one. My gosh, did Ocean put out some junk in the 90s. But as a kid, I didn't care. And some of me still does not. Because in the late 80s, early 90s, I ate, slept, and breathed Jurassic Park. And to this day, it's my favorite film of all time. And while I'm here to tell you that it's not a good game, it absolutely is an experience. It captures exactly what being in the movie would be like, mainly by scaring the crap out of you and then killing you over and over and over and over again. This game made me jump so much as a kid, I still probably twitch today because of it. I would play it for hours and never really get anywhere and not even know what the point was. But again, like Majora's Mask or Minecraft, I didn't care whether I could beat it or not. I just wanted to explore every single inch of it find the T-Rex, wrestle with the raptors, find the little eggs that are hidden all over the park, go in the buildings and, and plug in my Super Nintendo mouse and use it for something besides just Mario Paint. I just wanted to go everywhere and see everything. And I, you can beat the game, but I, I've never done it. But maybe one day. But until then, I think I'll just go around here and look in this corner for a little bit. Number one on the list, and uh, probably not a surprise to a lot of people, is Journey. Journey might be in my top ten games of all time. It really is that good, and there's nothing else like it. It really isn't even a game so much as it just is atmosphere. The story, the music, the visuals, everything is so perfectly delivered to the player without any effort or even language that it defines the list as the perfect means of moving the player with nothing but pure, unadulterated visuals and sounds. Compared to everything on the list, like Portal 2, I, I dreaded those monsters that were stalking the planes, but unlike Portal, I still dread them every time I play the game. Like Metroid, it tells a compelling story about an alien environment, yet in a familiar tone, through its sound and visuals. And like Earthbound, as I've already stated, it sort of twists the familiar, putting you on a place that, you know, we've all seen a desert, but it's so alien as well. Uh, like Bridge Commander, it puts me in the center of um, control in a place that would be really cool to go and see. It's a story that I want to live in. Like Minecraft, it feels massive. Like Majora's Mask, the people you meet feel real because in Journey, they are real. Like Luigi's Mansion, the music just moves the story along and feels like a connected piece. It feels like your actions drive the music, not your journey being driven by the music itself. And like Donkey Kong Country, it raised the bar on what's possible, specifically in storytelling. And finally, like Jurassic Park, I just want to explore every inch of it. Journey is one of the first games I ever got 100% in trophies for. It's one of the first games that I ever played over and over again right after I got it. It's an incredible experience, and I've never sat down to play it and not played it through in one sitting. 
Every time you play it, it feels new and fresh, and I genuinely believe anyone could play it and enjoy it. Again, it defines what atmospheric games are, and is proof that as a medium, nothing really draws you in in the same way as playing a video game. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you'd like more videos, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think of my list. Um, tell me your list. Until then, God bless.